Hi there. In this video, I am going to be showing you how you can code a Trithemius cipher in Python. If you do not have a compiler app already downloaded, something like Atom, for example, I would recommend you go online and look up a Python compiler. There are many options for online editors, so I just click on one and go with it. The coding we are doing today isn't too complicated so long as you know if statements and for loops, so an online compiler isn't too bad an option. Just be careful because it won't save for you unless you tell it to save or you happen to be in a compiler that has that option. So let's start with a Trithemius cipher. This cipher basically works by offsetting the code alphabet from the original Latin alphabet. So the Latin alphabet starts with A, B, C, D, whereas a potential Trithemius alphabet could start with D, E, F, G. And so basically you receive a plain text message like apples and you number the letters inside the plain text as indexes. So apples from the plain alphabet would correspond to A being one and then P is something like 16 and L is something else and so on. Then you take your Trithemius alphabet, which is offset, but you index it with the same numbers. So if your Trithemius alphabet starts with an F, all A's in your message would become F's. And so the coded message would be sufficiently scrambled and you couldn't make much sense of it unless you knew that it was a Trithemius alphabet and that you could figure out how many letters the offset was. So let's make a program that creates an offset based on user input and takes a plain text message and converts it into code. So we're going to start by doing def and then we'll call this Trithemius. All right, and then this will be our function here and we're going to just say return encoded. All right. So let's start by setting some things up. Just to remind you, a hashtag is a comment. So let's say this section is the setup. And let's start by creating a plain alphabet. So alphabet equals, and then we're going to make this a list. And we're going to want each element in the list to be a string. You can use double quotation marks or single quotation marks. It doesn't matter for Python. Uh, I'm just going to copy and paste this so I don't have to go through all the letters. We're going to set up an empty list for our encoded alphabet. Next, let's get the user input. And in order to get user input, we're going to use the function input. But for our offset, we're going to want an integer. An input usually returns a string. So we're going to force this thing to be an integer. We're going to get an input. And what we put in here is the prompt for the input. So let's say enter the offset number for the encoded message. And I like to put a little space there just so that it's not cramped at the end. This is the part where someone will say, I want to offset the alphabet by three. And so instead of starting with a, you offset by three and your code alphabet would start with D. Next, let's get our plain text message. This we do want to be a string. And so let's go straight for input and then enter a message to code. And I'm just going to put the conditions all lowercase and no symbols. Now, this isn't going to be the most robust program. If someone does put in an uppercase letter, it, it just won't really work. It won't recognize everything because I've only put my alphabet in lowercase. And I also haven't put any sort of code in for symbols. So it's just not going to recognize what to do with these characters, but I'm not really going for the most robust program right now. Really, what I'm trying to do is create something which, even though it might not be the most sleek or foolproof code, it shows what the cipher can do and shows how you can create the cipher in a very basic, uh, maybe a little bit scrappy way. Let's start by making our coded alphabet. 
we're going to start with a loop which will go through the entire range of the alphabet so for x in range and this will tell us to go through 26 different letters um, although that may be a little excessive uh, since we start counting with zero uh, on computers maybe I've overshot the runway we'll see if that index x plus the trithemius offset is greater than 25 then we're going to want to cycle it back and so we're going to do a couple of things in this step first we're going to be building our trith alphabet so we're going to be adding elements to this list and next which elements we're going to add and so if i start with d then after i reach the letter z i'm going to want the elements a, B, and C to come up at the end of my alphabet. So we're going to do this by first saying dot append, and then now we're going to index the alphabet. So we're going to go to alphabet, and then the index is going to be whatever our index was for that moment. So it's going to be X. But then we're going to do the offset right, because we don't want to just repeat the alphabet, we're going to say plus however much we said the offset was, and then this is a condition where our index is cycling around, so this is our sort of wraparound, so we need to subtract 26 from that, so that we loop back to the beginning of the alphabet, and then keep marching forward. I'm not sure if I'm really articulating that in a way that makes perfect sense, but if you kind of think about it for a minute or maybe draw it on a piece of paper, I think you'll see it all fits together. So the other condition, of course, is for when we have not yet reached the end of the alphabet. We've not yet reached Z, and so we need to just march along with the offset. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to dot append, and then now we're going to be indexing just our alphabet for the X and then plus our offset. Great, so this has created our Trithemius alphabet. Now we're going to deal with the encoded message. We're going to make a list of the input message because we want to be able to assess every single character that the user input. We're going to create a list out of the input plain message, and then we're going to use the function strip in order to parse out all of the individual characters. I'm doing this pretty quickly and without much testing the code because, full disclosure, I wrote this code before making this video. So I'm fairly confident that this is going to work, but I would recommend using the print function very frequently when writing code initially. I mean, I feel like my most common problem in coding is not that I coded something inaccurately, it's that I coded the wrong thing entirely. So basically, I spend a lot of time debugging saying, what did I think I coded versus what I actually coded. So using print to see what alphabet you've actually created, um, and you, oh my gosh, like I have seven P's in my alphabet, and then you can say, well, where did I go wrong? And then you can do your debugging. Now we have a list of the plain text message, and we're going to create an empty list to initialize our coded index list. We also need to initialize a string version of our coded message because we want to be able to append not only indices of an alphabet, but we also want to be able to append individual characters to a coded message. So we're sort of building the message one letter at a time. These empty lists and empty strings will probably make more sense as you go through the next steps where you're creating these messages, but for now, just take my word for it. All right, so we're going to go through the plain list and append the different indices of the alphabet. Right, so for Y in plain list, I'm gonna add a few more enters here so we can just have a little bit more space. And I'm gonna make a few notes here too so I don't make any changes to spaces for this code. So if Y is equivalent to 
which is two equal signs to say equivalent to. If y is equivalent to an empty space, then there's just a space bar in there. And we want to add to the coded index an empty space. So coded index list dot append and then empty space. Next is an else statement. So if it's not a space bar and we're going to assume that the user obeyed our instructions and didn't put any capital letters or symbols in there, we can go ahead and create this for loop, which goes through the whole trith alphabet and will index based off of whether or not the letters match up. So for I in range 26, because our alphabet is still that long, if a truth alphabet at that index is equivalent to the character in the plain list, Y is going to be an actual letter. It's not a number, so it's going to be an A or B or C. And then I is a number, but it's indexing our code alphabet. So this whole thing is going to be a letter as well. So if the letter from this alphabet at this index is equal to the character from the plain text message, then we're going to want to append that index to the coded index list. Coded index list dot append and that index. If I were writing this for the first time, this would be a point where I would use the print function and see what I've created in the coded index list. I'd also probably print out my cipher alphabet and my regular alphabet and see if everything lines up. Now, let's reconstruct indices into the coded message. So I don't know how long the plain text message was or will be that someone inputs. So we're going to get the length of the list and that way we don't have to do any sort of weird guesswork. So use len which gives us the length of the coded index list. All right, so this is going to be giving us numbers, remember, and it's not the actual specific numbers. It's not like um, 2479. It's like this list is 10 characters long, and so this is the range 0 to 9. If the coded index list at that index x and this is getting kind of complicated with using the word index over and over again, but if the coded index list at that index x is equivalent to a space, then we just want to add a space to the message. So first let's start with that space bar accommodation. If it's not a space bar, so else, append that letter of the alphabet so let's say coded message equals coded message, right? We don't want to lose all of the stuff that we've added to the list beforehand, but add the alphabet indexed at the coded index list. Let's go ahead and get our coded message results. Use the print function to print coded message and then <laughs> print the coded message. I bet you didn't see that one coming. And then I'm actually going to add another print here and just sort of do a blank space so that we get an enter key. Just for fun, I'm going to add a little extra treat for those who are curious. We're going to ask if the user wants to see the alphabets and if they say yes, then we can show them the index list of the Trithemius and the plain text alphabet so they can compare and see if the code worked right. We're going to give them just the option of yes or no, and then we're going to give the code an if statement. We want it to be user friendly, so print truth alphabet and the same for plain text.
All right, so this, unless I've made mistakes, should work. So let's go ahead and give it a go. Let's say I want to offset the alphabet by three. So three, hit enter. Uh, what kind of message do I want? And uh, I like cheese and crackers. <laughs> All right, I can already see without saying yes or no that my code is looking pretty good. But let's check. Good, we've got spaces here for between I and like. Let's go ahead and count this I. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, perfect. And then this was the L for like. So uh, this was 5 and then this is 6, 7, 8, perfect. Yeah, so you can kind of see how it all comes together and it might be interesting for you to look at the alphabet we created with our offset by and so any A's become D's and B's become E's. It's a pretty cute little code we've got going here so I hope you enjoyed making this cipher.